syrup. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> yes. 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 Greek sweet things tend yeah. to be fairly syrupy, mm, don't mm, they? Mm. Um, and they make, no, of, uh, they make a lot of cakes with semolina <laughs> yeah, in, uh, yeah. in Greece, actually. Really? And this cake sometimes is called rivani. Uh -huh. It depends which part of Greece you are. Right. And in Cyprus is called galombrama, which means good thing. And it oh, is really? a good thing, believe me. Yes. <laughs> you know, so it depends which part of Greece you are. And is this uh, a recipe that has been in your family? Well, or this is my mom's recipe, actually. Right. And she uses yogurt. Now, uh -huh. a lot of uh, other recipes uh, use milk. But my uh -huh. mum always used uh, yogurt. Just give a so sort of extra tang yes. to it. Yes. Oh, it's oh, beautiful. Good. It makes it more creamy as well. Right. You know, right. So it's really nice. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. we're, um, we're looking at a film today of Rosemary yeah. Barron, the author of Flavours of Flavors Greece, of Greece who's one. doing a special figgy pudding yeah, dry figs. in Corfu. Mm. Dried figs, was dry it? Dried figs, yes, in sort of like lovely syrup. Mm. Mm. Well, let's watch her. Rosemary, you're going to make us a very old and unusual dessert today. Yes, the, as you know, in Greece, for the most part, desserts aren't eaten. And mm -hmm. it's quite rare uh, that they are eaten in the, uh, after a meal. Uh, but this one, when I was on Crete, my neighbour used to make this, my neighbour Nula. Mm. And what she used to do was she used to take dried figs. She grew them herself and mm -hmm. dried them for the winter. She used to trim the stems off. And with them, she'd add a flavouring of bay leaves and the reason for that is that when figs are kept for the winter they're um, stringed, nice long yeah, strings across right. the rafters with bay leaves and the bay leaves keep the flies away. They've been doing this since antiquity. Mm. So we put the figs in the bowl mm -hmm. with the bay leaves. We add a piece of lemon zest and to get the lemon zest you just take a very sharp knife mm. and peel off the piece carefully avoiding the white Yes, because it's very bitter. Because it's it, very bitter. Yes. Add it to the bowl mm. and uh, add also the cinnamon sticks, which is a very ancient flavour. These were That's used right. in antiquity because the ancients, they used to have these flavours, although cinnamon's never grown in Greece, it's a tropical spice. Uh, the ancients had these flavours because, of course, they used to indulge in the uh, spice roots too. That's right, yeah. You mm. cover the figs with Mavrodaphne wine. Oh, so you're marinating it in a sweet wine. You are? Yeah. And the, sweet, the reason for that is, is that the, in antiquity, the wine that was used was the wine, uh, was sweet wine, yeah. what we know as sweet wine, um, and it gives us the same mm. sort of flavour. This mm. is a dish that dates right back uh, to the days of ancient Greece. Mm. And how, of, uh, how long do we leave them to marinate? Any time from six hours or to overnight. That's often better to so make it overnight. Pre prepare early. That's right, you can prepare <laughs> early. in advance. And you can also make this dish in advance for dinner party. You could yeah. make it, say, in the morning and just leave it sitting. It always tastes better mm. because eventually it's going to have a syrup on it. Yeah. So after you've marinated it for overnight, six hours overnight, you add it to a stainless steel saucepan. Mm -hmm. Everything. You, All everything. the marinades. You throw yeah. everything, everything in. in. Yes. And if perhaps you don't have uh, quite enough wine, yeah. Uh, to cover in the saucepan. You can yeah. always add a little bit add more the, because yeah. saucepans aren't mm -hmm. always the same mm -hmm. size as, as the bowls. That's right. So you simmer this for about 10 minutes until, until they're, they're fixed plump. Beautifully uh -huh. plump. Yeah. yeah. And then when they come out, you take them out with a salted spoon. Mm -hmm. And when they come out, they look just like mm, this. They look plump and beautiful, listening. don't they? I can eat them now. <laughs> they're shiny. They? They look, but they get better. Yeah. They get Today. better. Yes. Then we measure the wine mm -hmm. uh, that we've cooked the figs in. Yes. We've simmered the figs in for 10 minutes. And add to the saucepan half as much sugar as you have wine. So we're making and a syrup goes, here, are we? We're making a All syrup. All right, yes. And then we cook the syrup down. Mm. And the important thing uh, with this dish is we cook the syrup down until it looks like mm. this and it just coats the back of the spoon. We don't need a syrup thermometer yeah. for this. So when our syrup is just right and it takes mm. anything between 10 mm. to 15 minutes but we should watch it a little bit because and don't boil it too fast because um, they can go no, caramelly. That's but that's right. how it should look just yeah. like and that. And the, the lemon uh, stops it from uh, caramelizing. It does doesn't indeed. It, it does indeed. Then for serving it, yeah. 
I like to serve a dish with a few of the ingredients that have gone into it. Mm. And in this case, the bay leaves. And we're going to serve it with manuri cheese. Mm. And manuri cheese is a very beautiful cheese. Oh, made of sheep's cheese, milk. Yes. It's a, a, a semi-soft cheese, yeah. yes, indeed. And uh, it's made from sheep's milk. Mm -hmm. And you can get it in the best manuri is from the mountains. And we just put and the figs out. And they go together nicely. They go together they beautifully yes. because you've got the textures. Yeah. You've got the cherry, yeah. very sweet texture mm. of the figs. Actually, mm. when I, I, that's wrong. It's not really very sweet. The syrup is very sweet, but mm. the figs have got a lovely fruity texture. Mm. And the cheese Which complements the cheese, doesn't it? Yeah. I love... Um, the cheese is soft. Yeah. I love the rest, sweet and sour yeah. together. Do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> also, it's a very, very healthy dish. Oh, yeah. Because... We're looking, although there's some sugar here in the syrup, there's very little compared to when you think that this serves, this can serve four people. Mm. Uh, there's very little syrup when you compare it to something like our usual puddings, mm. which have an awful lot of sugar in. And the cheese itself is healthy. Mm. So, you should serve, this needs to be served fairly soon um, because uh, now the cheese is on the plate. But of course, if you want to, for convenience sake, you can leave the figs in the syrup mm. uh, for. Until up to three ready. days. Until you're ready until to serve it. three days, exactly. Yes. Oh. Quite a long time. Yes. And uh, we can serve them any time you like. Oh, it looks lovely. <laughs> do you like the smell of it? I do actually. Like could I some? taste a bit of the oh. syrup because it looks so... I love the colour of it. It's <laughs> like a treacle, treacle. Yeah, sort of russet brown mm. treacle. Oh, yes, it is And that's nice. the flavours of antiquity you have there because all the flavours of cinnamon, the bay leaves are still in the, oh, yes. in the syrup. Cinnamon is... Yeah. Strong there. <laughs> Lovely that. Well, I'd, I'd be happy with just the syrup, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rosemary has contributed a lot of recipes to this series, she hasn't has, she? has, yes. But I think that was one you said, one of the ones you enjoyed most. Th yeah, that yeah. was one of yeah. the best things she cooked. Right. For me, anyway. Yeah, no, it's yeah, fair enough. That you were there. was really lovely. You tasted yeah. it. And I love figs. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to tasting your semali cake yes. later on, but for the time being, I'll leave you to get on with Okay, it. Charles, okay. I'll see you in a bit. Terrific. Because it doesn't take long. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, let's get on with the recipe. Now, we need three eggs. Break your eggs into a large bowl. Like that. All right, making sure you don't get the egg yolks like I have been doing. That's right, take it out, eggshells. Okay, now we add 10 ounces of sugar. It's quite a lot of sugar here, about two cups actually. Mix it with your eggs and then we're not using butter, but we're using vegetable oil in this. You do need to use vegetable oil. As I said, this is my mum's recipe and she insists in vegetable oil. So mum, I'm doing the right thing. Okay, be that together and then you need quite a lot of Greek yogurt. It doesn't have to be the set yogurt, it could be the other one, you know. Uh, but you need a pound of plain yogurt. That's what will make it really nice and creamy. Uh, now, if you don't want to use yogurt, you can use milk. All right. Tidy up there. Now, as I said, keep mixing. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. my hands a little bit. I'm also going to add uh, the zest of one lemon. Again, you can use orange if you want. It doesn't have to be lemon, but I like the, the lemon flavor. Mix that in. Now I'm going to add just five ounces of plain flour. Now, a lot of people don't like to use flour. They just use semolina, but uh, I like to use a little bit of flour with it rather than that. Just have semolina. I'm also going to add four tablespoons of baking powder because we're using plain flour and mix that in. And I'm also going to use, I hope I pronounce this right, but because I could never pronounce it. So please don't laugh. I'm using a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. Have I said that all right? <laughs> all right. I always laugh because I'm, I can never pronounce it right. Mix the, all this in until nicely blended. And now I'm going to add a pound of coarse semolina. Don't use the fine semolina for this cake. Use the coarse one. 
mix all that in together. And actually I'm going to get a wooden spoon, I think, or I'm to give it a, another mix, like that. You mix it until it looks nice and it looks like a, a creamy mixture. And the next thing you need to do is to brush your cake tin with either butter or oil, or oil, it doesn't matter. Make sure you brush it really well, brush the corners as well. And then pour your mixture into your tin. Right. Now we need to decorate it with some blanche almonds. But first of all, I'm going to mark the portions I want. So I'll, I'll mark that first. And you need to mark it in about six places. Like that. You do that so you can put your almonds in the right place. And now you add your almonds into rows. Make sure that you don't add any in the middle because you'll be cutting it in the middle. So do this. And when I've done that, I have to put the cake in the preheated oven at 200 degrees, gas mark 6, and it needs, to, it needs to be cooking for about 40 to 45 minutes or until nice and golden. And now we're going to take a break, but after the break I'm going to show you how to make a syrup that we're going to put on top of this cake. So see you later. Yesterday's shepherd's pie is still there because it isn't always removed by some traditional detergents. But now there's new finished double action tablets, a unique two-layer tablet for superior cleaning. The blue layer penetrates and softens tough, dried-on food, so the white layer can clean to a brilliant shine. The results? See for yourself. Double action finish. Now in a new, bigger value pack. So you think it will never happen to you. But somewhere in Britain, there's a burglary every 25 seconds. That's why your home needs protection with a security system from Extra Watch. Extra Watch puts your home aligned to the emergency services 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, so we can take action fast. Systems start from just £99 fully installed, including personal attack alarm. And with a monitoring charge of just 99p per day, that's a small amount to protect your family and home 24 hours a day. Call 0800 955 999 for further information. That's 0800 955 999. Extra Watch. Security for life. 0800 123 300. Now repeat that. Just listen, repeat and understand. That's how easy it is to start speaking a new language with Linguaphone in as little as 12 weeks. Call free for a 14-day home trial and start speaking any of 30 languages at your own pace. Phone 0800 123 300 today for your 14-day no-risk trial or ask about our free information pack. We're waiting for your call. At Chicken Tonight, we're famous for two things. Two, two, push pineapple, shake the tree. One, creating delicious recipes, especially for chicken. What's the matter, you? Hey! Got to no respect. Hey! Why are you looking And two, our awful taste in music. You can. I can't. I feel like chicken tonight. How else could we explain this theme tune? Great food, lousy music. Chicken Tonight! Lean and Lou Bacon from Dane Pet has less fat and less salt, but all the taste and smell. Nobody knows bacon like we know bacon. Let Extra Watch protect your home 24 hours a day from just £99. Call now on 0800 955 999. Hello and welcome back. Now, before we took a break, I was showing you how to make a semolina cake, which is a semolina cake. Now, 
my cake is in the oven baking, so I'm going to show you how to make the syrup. Now, it's very simple syrup. You need one pint of water, put it into a medium saucepan, and then you eat, need 10 ounces of sugar. Now, you mix it in, and then you add two cinnamon sticks and a, and a couple of cloves. Now, mix it with your wooden spoon until the sugar dissolves. And then when your sugar dissolves, you add the juice of half a lemon. Uh, yeah, half a lemon. That's right. I thought that said orange then. <laughs> Here we are. I tend to do that a lot. Okay. Once it comes to the boil, you need to simmer it for about 5 to 10 minutes. And I've got one that's been simmering now, here, for 10 minutes, and it's starting to thicken. But I don't want it very thick. That's why I add a lot of water as well with it. It's not like making paclava. When you're making paclava, the syrup has to be very, very thick. Right, I'm going to bring my cake out of the oven. Oh, and it's looking really, really nice. Look at it. Doesn't it look beautiful? Now, it's been cooking for 45 minutes. Now, before I add my syrup, I have to prick the cake with a skewer. This will help the syrup to be absorbed by the, by the cake. Absorbed by the cake. Hide that. Now... Again, it's very unusual. Usually, you add cold syrup to hot cakes or the other way around. But in this case, you need both of them to be warm. You need your cake to be hot and you need your syrup to be warm. Now, you need to spoon it really slowly, like that. And you need to use all this syrup. I know you think it's quite a lot, but believe me, it's not. Spoon it like that. And you can eat this cake hot or cold. It's up to you. And again, you can have it with fresh cream, or you can have it with Greek yogurt, or even ice cream. There we are. Okay. All I need to do now is cut it into portions. And it's easily done now because... It's already marked for me with the almonds. Now this will make 14 portions. So it's, it's quite a big cake and it's good if you're having a dinner party or something like that or a, a picnic. Here we are and our cake is ready now to be served. And I'm going to go to Charles now and see what wines he's got to go with this beautiful cake. Right. Okay, Charles, you better like it or else. Oh, I'm sure I will, Lula. <laughs> Anything created by your mother and honed to perfection by yourself by me, yes. must be good. Now, I wasn't at all sure quite how sweet this was going to turn out to all be. All right. Well, let so me what give I've you got a piece. Is, is three wines of, I think, very varying sweetness. We're starting off with a very, it, it's a, it's really the modern generation of Greek wines. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first instances that I'm aware of Could I give in you which, that? yes, please, thank you very much, in which Greek winemakers have cooperated with winemakers from outside Greece. Mm. And I, I may be wrong, but I think this is the first time that Greek winemakers have worked with Australian winemakers. Mm, it's, it's unusual, actually. And it's actually, a very, yes. very, very reasonably priced wine. It's called Temple Ruins, <clears throat> um, and it's made at a higher Klaus. Temporary. You know, who are, who are famous yes. for their Mavrodaphne yeah. Petras. Mm. And it's, it's made by a, an Australian winemaker at, at Achaia Klaus. Oh, right. And it's only £2.99 a bottle quite at cheap. Asda. Quite cheap. But it's not that sweet, and I'm not sure whether, having seen that yummy looking syrup going on top of this cake, mm. no. whether it be sweet enough. Actually, it's not a thick syrup, so no. it's not going to be very sweet. Mm. Mm. Well, let's try. Now, I love the nutty, crunchy 
texture of this cake. I think it's terrific. Now, what I'm not sure about is whether this first wine is going to mm. be sweet enough because it's only just off dry. Let's try it. Well, this cake is not very sweet, actually, because the syrup is it's a thin syrup. Sure. So yeah. it's not yeah. as sweet as you think. So, but, but even it's so, still a little try, bit dry, I, yeah. it's, it's, it's not quite, Definitely, it's I, not quite no, sweet enough, no. is it? Okay, <laughs> Too dry. but it's a nice wine, and for two yeah. ninety nine, I think if for Very people cheap. who want to start out trying a Greek white yeah. wine, and yeah. they don't particularly like the flavour of mm. Retsina, because some no, people no. don't, mm. um, I think this is a good one to start on. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to move to a one? German wine. Oh. This is a German wine made by a very, very good German winemaker called Rainer Lingenfelder. It's, um, it's, it's a cabinet, a Riesling cabinet from the Rheinfels. Cabinet means that it's one step up the level of quality. Oh, the right. basic level is, is quality wine. Mm -hmm. Then you go cabinet, spätleser, mm -hmm. auslaser, birnauslaser, trockenbeeren, auslaser. So <laughs> cabinet is the so first German one. German to me. Ah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Anyway, this has got this lovely floral rather mm. lemony character. Now, yeah, you this, find that with German wines, don't you? That's right, uh, ma particularly those made from yeah. Riesling. Now, this one is definitely sweeter. And I was hoping it might work quite well with this. Mm. It's slightly sweeter, mm. Mm. but still quite dry, mm. really. For a dessert wine, anyway. I don't know. Still not quite sweet no. enough, is it? No. Oh, well, well. Never mind. <coughs> it's a Can't lovely wine, though. It's got Charles. a lovely sort of fresh <laughs> floral character. And I think s some people get slightly put off German wines because they're too sweet. Too sweet, yeah. Right, now, this is my full-bloodedly sweet <laughs> right. attempt to match this cake of yours. Now, this is a Sautern, which um, it's mm. always more expensive, yeah. particularly if you get a good one. This is a good one, Chateau Pasco Villefranche, £15.49 oh, a bottle. Wow. 15 49 um, bottoms up, fresher wine rack. So and this you need has got to get some money out of your bank before you well, buy this Well, something like bottle. that. Come to an arrangement with your bank manager. This mm. is this got that lovely, rich, oh. creamy no, this apricot. This is coffee. lovely. Mm. I can smell expensive wine, you know. I know. I'm a snob. I know. Well, I mean, this is this is a very mm. good wine. It's lovely, that. No. Hmm. I think it goes very well, actually. This is so the one. So we do have a this winner. This is the one. Well, <coughs> I'm afraid you're going to have to dig in your bank balances for our <laughs> Chateau Pasco Villefranche. But mm. if you'd like to try Lula's recipe for Somali cake at home, together with some or all of the wines, particularly the Sautern, yeah. here's today's recipe recap. Right, well, that's it for today. So today we had one of Lula's signature dishes. Next time, we've got a special dish from Greece's top TV that's cook. That's right, Beth That Alexiano. lovely lady who had yeah. that beautiful house oh, on the Halkidiki yes. Peninsula. Mm -hmm. And I think what she's going to be cooking is freshly caught local fish taken straight out of the sea, right, oh, yeah. sort of very close to it her house. It was a lovely dish, actually. She yeah. baked it in the oven. Fantastic. Wonderful. And what a lovely lady she yeah. was. Very hospitable. And what are you cooking? I'm cooking... Uh, uh, pork chops yeah. uh, with red wine and coriander seeds, mm -hmm. which is a failure. I don't know if you heard of it. It's a secret speciality, actually. I have. I have. It's actually. wonderful. I shall have wines to match, and we look <laughs> forward to seeing you then. See you. Mm. Nah. No, I think... <laughs>
Wonder Television and Time Life Video proudly present Bet, the first in a new enthralling series that looks at the lives of some of Coronation Street's favorite characters. Scenes from the world's longest running drama serial have been carefully chosen from nearly 30 years of episodes to tell the intimate and dramatic story of Bet in a 90 minute video for just £5.99. Call 0800 520 620 now to order. Every Coronation Street fan will be fascinated as we take you back to 1966 when Bet Lynch, the cheeky young factory girl, first popped into the Rovers. The characters who played their part in Bet's life are all in this video, and you can enjoy another stroll down Coronation Street with them when you call this number and order Bet, part of the Coronation Street collection presented by Judy Finnegan. It's yours for just £5.99. Once we've received payment, Time Life will send you the next in the series. So call 0800 520 620 today. Bosch appliances might look stunning, but first and foremost, they're designed to be used. Take a closer look, and you'll find they're also surprisingly affordable and extremely practical, because Bosch designed them to work beautifully in any kitchen. Bosch. Excellence comes as standard. Join Cat and Stay Dry for the new Huggies treasure hunt, because nothing keeps a pirate drier than Huggies. And all Huggies have stretchy, refastable tabs. They fasten again and again, even with oily hands. Ha ha ha! Oh! Treasure ahoy! Huggies? Huggies! There's no joy or nappy on the seven seas. Granada Good Life. Food and wine. Hello, welcome. Yes, it's Giga Lasorisa Now, today we're still on signature dishes, and this time it's Vefa Alexiadou, who is Greece's top TV cook. Definitely, cool. definitely. Everyone knows her, yeah. everyone recognizes her. Everywhere we uh, went together, yeah. everybody stopped her and right. shook her hand. Yeah. She's treated like yeah. royalty Absolutely. in Greece. Well, uh, she, and she's I a mean, lovely lady. And she cooked some fishes for you, That's didn't right. She, she cooked, uh, I think they were, uh, I'm not sure if they were anchovies or, or, or sardines. I'm still a right. bit confused. Okay. Because they look small. the same, but small. she baked them with lots of um, onions and tomatoes. They were delicious. Right. Because they were so fresh as well. Good. Excellent. Oh, they were fabulous. Now, what are you and Didier Solos doing yes. today? Well, I'm doing Prisoles Afelia. Prisoles Kirines Afelia, which is right. pork chops yes. Afelia, which is a Cypriot speciality. Uh -huh. It's in red wine and coriander. And Solos is making a coriander salad ah. that goes really well together right. with this. Okay, okay. And it's, this is eaten in Greece as well. Right. It, it's so yes. popular in Cyprus, that, it's uh, and, yeah. and it's a lovely dish yeah, I it's that now the Greeks make it, yes, I which think it's is really good. nice. Good, excellent. Well, I look forward to trying that later. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Vefa Alexiadou with some fish near a beach. <laughs> Συνήθως οι ντομάτες δεν έχουν πολύ χρώμα, είδατε το με τις ντομάτες μας, ώσπου να ετοιμάσουμε τη γέννηση. Κατά τον ίδιο τρόπο ανοίγουμε τις κουπεριές, να μην ανοίγω τώρα την άλλη, και βγάζουμε από μέσα τα σπόρια. Αφαιρούμε μια φέτα επάνω. Λα τώρα εγώ ήρθα από την Αγγλία, ξέρω, από το Μαντζέστερ. Ξέρω που μένεις πολλά χρόνια εκεί. Ρε, στα βόντανα.
now I'm going to cook a very popular Greek dish, baked fish, baked small fish. Mm -hmm. We call it plaiki, psari plaiki sto furno. Which means bake flat in the oven. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How do we do this? Then? I have one half and a, a one, one kilo and a half. It's three pounds. What's this fish called? Gabros. We put all the fish in a seat, as you see me here. And not flat. Yes. You clean it, have, haven't you? Let you me have, have a spoon it. here. You put the fish all flat. Mm. Now on top, we have to put the onions. You take the onions, I have cut it mm. very thin, yeah. and I'll put it on the top. How many onions have we used here? It is about five small onions oh, right. or too big. Mm. All right. I'll put so the you can use shallots if you want. The little Better. onions. Yes. yes, the little onions. Mm. So the thin, okay. thinly slice. And uh, the onions with the other ingredients become so tasty. Mm. With the parsley and with the tomatoes we will put on top. It's a colorful dish and tasteful. Mm. Okay. I'll move this for you. I put the onion. Now I will put the parsley and the garlic. I have about four to five cloves of garlic. Let me cut the garlic first and then put the parsley. Right. Oh, so thin you slice. Cut, yes, yes, you slice thin the slice. garlic, you don't crush it. No, hmm. in this dish we need this, the garlic thinly sliced. Slice, yes. You are prepared to put the yeah, parsley How on much top? parsley do we put in here? All this parsley? It is about one cup. One, one cup. cup. Well, we'll just pretend. Thinly cut parsley. Let me, parsley. tell me if I'm putting enough. Put all this parsley on top. Oh, right, you want yes, all, all of it. It's one oh. cup. No, 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 quick. No, don't too quick. Not too quick. Because it has to go all, all right. around. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll do it. As you saw me to do with the garlic. Make sure that we cover all the fish all with the parsley, fish. yes? Yes. All right. Have now I done a good job? Fish. You did very, very well. Good. Thank you very much for helping. <laughs> <laughs> now we will put the thinly sliced tomatoes. Mm. Have you skinned the tomatoes or not? Or you no, don't, you no. don't need to do I that. I left the skin yeah. on. on. Uh, I put the tomatoes all around and I cover the fish mm. in order don't get dry. Mm. So the fish so doesn't go yes, dry. Yes. Dry on the top. Mm. So you're sort of putting a layer of onions, a layer mm -hmm. of parsley, and uh, now we're finishing with the forget, tomatoes. We mustn't forget to put some slices of lemon. You can cut How thinly, many would you like? Uh, cut the lemon thinly, Th slice thinly, like that? Okay. yes, very thin. Well, I try. And we will put about three. It gives some bitterness. Yeah. How many and slices did you say? Three. Three. Three of it. Okay, I covered the surface with the tomatoes. Now we will put the lemon slices and we are ready to put the olive oil on top. Where shall I put and this? Salt and pepper. I think you here better. and here and, and there. there. Okay, right. very nice. Okay, now we have to put the salt. Mm -hmm. Enough salt. Mm -hmm. And then freshly ground like pepper. Smells very nice. Wonderful. Well, the whole thing looks so colorful mm -hmm. and so beautiful. And it started. It's, we haven't started cooking yet, but no, it smells <laughs> but it's lovely. <laughs> it smells so nice. Yeah, because of the ingredients, the fresh ingredients we're using For here. For three pounds of uh, gavros, yes. we need one cup olive oil. Mm. Again, we'll a lot. Pour the olive oil on top, all around. We'll spread it. Very nice. So this dish needs a lot of olive oil. One cup. Yes. Yes. Lots of olive oil. And um, it becomes very tasty mm. when all the juices evaporate and the olive oil stays there. Oh, there. Yes. So we don't add anything else now. So no it water. It needs much baking. Yeah, it a lot of baking. A lot of baking. It takes about one hour and a half. Wow, for a little fish like but that. But it's so tasty. <laughs> yes. Do you cover it when you bake it? No, or uncover no, it? because I yes. want all the juices to evaporate. Yes. 
so and we don't only the olive oil stays to remain a yes. little thick sauce. Mm. Mm. Finish. We are ready to put it in the in oven, the oven. Yes. and bake one hour and a half. Lovely. Well, we should go and put it in the oven now. Yes. Then. Is your Why oven not? ready? Ready. The oven is ready. Let's go. Okay. You can see why she's so popular. <laughs> she's she seemed a terrific. She's terrific a fantastic person. character, yeah, actually. Yeah, Very yeah. bubbly. She was always singing. Yes, you know? yes. She yes. had some Greek music on and singing Great. and dancing. Yeah. It was really nice. I had a yeah, wonderful yeah. afternoon with. That's Fantastic. and that's the last the last time we're going to see her. Yeah, in this unfortunately. Series. But it was yes. great. It was good to see her. Yeah. Now I'm going to leave you alone with your chops and solos chopping in the background. <laughs> and I'll okay, see you later. Okay, I'll see you later. All right, for our pork afelia, here in Esprisoles afelia, we need four nice thick pork chops like this. It's nice if they have a little bit of fat actually on them. I, that's how my grandmother used to uh, cook them. Now, and I've got to make a marinade for this to marinate them. Now, for that, I need some red wine. You need about half a bottle of good red wine. Dry wine is better, which is about two glasses of uh, red wine. And in here, I'm going to put one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm also going to add the main ingredient, which is coriander. Now, you need a large tablespoon of crushed coriander, not ground, crushed coriander. And what you do, you mix it and you bring it to the boil. Once this is boiled, you pour it on top of your chops, like this. And you, and you let them marinate for a couple of hours. Or, if, indeed, if you have time, do let them to marinate overnight. And after they've been marinated for a couple of hours, they look like this. They become beautiful red from the wine. They get this burgundy color. Now, you need to drain them, but do not throw the marinade because we're going to use this marinade to finish our chops. Right, once you do that, you need to wipe them a little bit as well so they're not too wet. And now I'm going to add not olive oil, but vegetable oil in, my, in a large frying pan. Now you only need a little bit, but about four tablespoons of vegetable oil. Uh, in, that's how they, they don't use olive oil in, in Cyprus for Afelia. They always use, they always use uh, vegetable oil. I think it's because they want a, a lighter flavor. Right, once your oil is, is hot, fry your chops. You need to fry your chops in both sides until they're nice and brown. And I must tell you a funny story. I was making a failure a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was looking for a glass uh, uh, for some red wine. And my husband uh, is a bit of co connoisseur with his wines. He buys expensive wines, and uh, I, I have used one of his very expensive bottles of wines in my failure. I think it was about 100 pounds <laughs> worth of wine. He was saying for the millennia year anyway. We had it a bit earlier <laughs> in our failure. And you know, that was the best failure I ever made in my life. <laughs> we still laugh about it actually. <laughs> our chops are still now and they're getting nice and brown. I need to season them with some pepper and salt. And also I need to put my marinade. The one that the chops have been marinated in. Now, you need to bring it to the boil. And you probably need to skim it, take the scum out of the top. Sometimes it's not necessary. And then, you lower, it down, the low the, you lower the heat, you cover it, and you simmer it. It takes about an hour and, uh, until they're soft, really. And they look like this after one hour. Don't they look lovely? After the break, I'm going to show you how to make some beautiful potato fritters that go really well with the uh, afelia. See you in a couple of minutes.
Yesterday's shepherd's pie is still there because it isn't always removed by some traditional detergents. But now there's new finished double action tablets, a unique two-layer tablet for superior cleaning. The blue layer penetrates and softens tough dried on food so the white layer can clean to a brilliant shine. The results? See for yourself. Double action finish. Now in a new bigger value pack. Imagine a place of your own. A relaxing space. Somewhere safe and comfortable, with everything organized just the way you want it. Then imagine it had a five-cylinder, 20-valve engine with the power to transport you swiftly and effortlessly wherever you want to go. The five-cylinder Fiat Mireia and Mireia Weekend, a space of your own. Call 0800 71 7000 for more information. 0800 123 300. Now repeat that. Just listen, repeat and understand. That's how easy it is to start speaking a new language with Linguaphone in as little as 12 weeks. Call free for a 14-day home trial and start speaking any of 30 languages at your own pace. Phone 0800 123 300 today for your 14-day no-risk trial or ask about our free information pack. We're waiting for your call. Give your bath time a lift. Call free on 0800 281 271. For anyone with bathing problems, the totally portable Easy Lift from AquaSooth is the answer. Safe and reliable, simple to operate, elegantly styled. The AquaSooth Easy Lift will lower and raise you easily in your bath at the touch of a button. To receive a full color brochure, call AquaSooth now, completely free on 0800 281 271. 0800 281 271. Our operators are ready now to take your calls. Singapore Airlines are offering amazing packages to South Australia. Phone 0345 02 2000 for details. Lean and Lou Beacon from Dean Pack has less fat and less salt, but all the taste and smell. Nobody knew Beacon like we knew Beacon. Welcome back. Now I'm going to make my potato fritters that go really well with my failure, which they're here. All right, what you need, you need a pound of potatoes, medium-sized potatoes, and you need to grate them in the biggest hole of your grater, like that. You want them coarse, coarsely grated. Watch your nails in that. <laughs> you don't want to be putting nails into your potato fritters, so always keep away your fingers away. All right. Takes a little bit of a time. See it? And the best way to avoid that, don't, don't do your last piece of potato. Just leave it. Once you do that, you put them in a, uh, in a sieve to drain. And now I'm going to make the rest of my mixture. You need two ounces of plain flour. I'm also going to add one egg. See if it's all right. One egg. Also going to put one teaspoon of baking powder that will help them rise and go nice and fluffy. Mix it all in like that. And now I'm going to add four tablespoons of milk, just plain milk like that. Three. It's like making a pancakes or butter mixture. Mix it like that. Also going to season. You need about a teaspoon of salt here and a little bit of either white or black pepper. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to add a teaspoon of dry oregano. But if you have fresh oregano, you can use fresh oregano. I'm also going to use some coriander. About two tablespoons of coriander. Chopped coriander. And the same amount with parsley. That gives it a nice green color. Now I'm going to add my potatoes. But you need to squeeze them dry, either with your hands or you can put them in a clean tower cloth and uh, twist them around to take all the excess water away. 
because otherwise your potato cakes are going to be very, very wet. There we are. Like that. Blend them all in. Like that. And they're looking really nice already. Nice and colourful. And of course we're using fresh coriander in here and we use dry coriander seeds in our failure. So it goes really, really well. The next thing we need is to heat enough olive oil or vegetable oil in the bottom of your frying pan and take tablespoons of this mixture and put them into your pan. A few at a time, don't crowd crowd them into your frying pan. You put about two, three together. Flatten them a little bit with the back of, the, of your spoon. Uh, and you know, kids love this. Well, my kids love them anyway. And of course, grown-ups, not just kids. And I'm hoping Charles will like them. All right, once my potatoes fritters are frying, I'm going to Dish my afelia into this. Okay, oh, they smell really, really nice. The coriander is coming through and the red wine. And I love this wonderful color. Put all the sauce there. And also I'm going to decorate them with a bit of fresh coriander. Let's see how my potatoes are doing. Oh, they're looking really, really nice. Yeah, you need to cook them in both sides. Like that. They're nice and golden now. Put them on some kitchen paper to just drain the excess oil. Switch this off. And now I'm going to put them with my rest of my potato fritters. Don't they look really, really nice and appetizing? And, Solos, have you finished my salad? Just finishing it now, Just yes. put the dressing, lemon juice and olive oil. Okay. And I'm going to go and see if Charles likes this wonderful dinner. Well, I certainly didn't give you any of these wonderful wines to use in your affelia, I'm afraid, <laughs> like for <laughs> Stuart. <laughs> you got scared. Oh, uh, goodness me. <laughs> this one must be one of the most expensive wines that we've actually used. Oh, thanks very much, oh, Solidol. Oh, that looks Terrific. really nice. Okay. Thanks. Lovely. This is a Greek Cabernet Sauvignon mm. from Chateau Semeli, and it costs £16.63 wow. a bottle. So that's quite a pricey little number from the Greek Wine Centre in Shrewsbury, in Shropshire. Yeah. And it's, I think it's, it's very good. If you like you to know. put some salad <coughs> as oh, well. Oh, thank you very much. Very interesting salad with Let coriander. Let me give you some as well. Um, it's, um, just give you a little thank bit Thank you, there. Charles. Give a smidgy. It's interesting because it's, it's a real New World style Cabernet Sauvignon. I mean, yeah. if I were given this blind, and I didn't know what it was, and someone said, well, what do you think this wine is, Charles? You would think, I really, yeah. I would think it came from California or Australia. And not Greece. I think it's no. very well made. It's got lovely yeah. black currant smell. Mm. Oh, it is lovely. Very Perhaps nice. it's slightly lighter. I think they've intentionally tried to make it a bit lighter so that it's not too, not too sort of big and alcoholic. Yeah. But it's a very nice, elegant yeah. wine. Um, very successful, I must say. You know, Greece... Yes excels itself again. Now, yeah, how great. does it go with your with my delicious looking Aphelia? Mm. Mm. I love coriander seeds. Mm. Mm. Wonderful. I do. A lot of people are scared to use coriander, oh, aren't no. they? I love them. But I love them. Because it's a fresh mm. taste. Mm. And almost a sort of lemony everton mm. to it. And of course in Cyprus they use a lot of coriander. I think it's nice, but I don't know. Pretty good, isn't it? Pretty good. Mm. I'm very happy with that. Mm. I must just taste this potato fritter, which looks delicious. Beautifully brown. Aphelias in Cyprus is usually served with some sort of potato. Very nice. You know, and I thought I'd be a little bit very different nice. and make Absolutely. fritters. It, it, it reminds me slightly of the sort of roasty potatoes that you see in, in which came originally from yeah. Switzerland, which you That's see now right. in sort of a lot of... 
in modern British restaurants. They're very trendy now, aren't yeah, very, they? Very. Right, OK. Now, the next wine does come from California. Um, it's <clears throat> the second wine of a terrific um, property called Laurel Glen. It's called Terra Rosa, and it's six ninety nine from Berkeley Wines or Wine Cellar. And you, it does have that extra depth. I was going to say that, yeah, definitely. Not, not the elegance of the Greek wine, perhaps, no. but it's got more richness. Yeah. Made by a winemaker called Patrick Campbell. I'm surprised it's only six ninety nine. Actually, just it's, it tastes very classy, it's doesn't it? It's very good. Uh, yes. Well, I'm glad you like it. Fantastic. Mm. Now he really is, I think, one of California's best winemakers. Yeah. Well. Mm. I can see why. Mm. It tastes fabulous. Difficult. I think I prefer that slightly to the Greek one with this. Yeah. Um, they're both terrific wines. But um, I think with this dish, at the moment, I'm, I'm voting for the California over the Greek. But let's see how it comes on. Next one, Spanish. Spanish wine. Now, this time, I haven't gone for pure Cabernet. I've gone for a blend of Tempranillo, which is the great grape of Rioja and Navarra. This comes from Navarra, Agramont, um, 469 from Odbins. And it's a blend of Tempranillo and Cabernet Sauvignon. Again, a very modern, very fruity wine. Yeah. Lovely flavours, I think. And how does it go with this? More dry, though, isn't it? Mm. Perhaps that's Tempranillo. Yeah. Mm. I think they're all nice. They're but all good. Probably the California gets it. I agree with you. California, Terra Rosa. Anyway, if you <laughs> want to try these wines at home together with Lula's Arfelia recipe, here's today's recap. <laughs> Well, that's it for today. I'm going to finish up this delicious Arfele. It's really very good. Next okay. time, Luli went and had lunch at the Pantelicon with John Selepis, didn't that's she? That's right. Yeah. Sort of modern cuisine, lamb stuffed with all sorts yes, of exciting new, things. Yeah, new old cuisine. You yeah, know, uh, yeah. He made this exciting dish for me Absolutely. with lamb and, and stuffed with feta and You're peppers. going to cook some lamb with okra? Yes, I've nime banya. Terrific. <laughs> I'll be back with more, more wines. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>
It began with Star Wars. Now, the Star Wars trilogy continues with The Empire Strikes Back. It is useless to resist. Experience it like never before. The Empire Strikes Back, and still playing in cinemas, Star Wars. Singapore Airlines are offering amazing packages to South Australia. Phone 0345 02 2000 for details. Let Extra Watch protect your home 24 hours a day from just £99. Call now on 0800 955 999. Granada Good Life. Food and wine. Sunshine Cuisine. I am your chef and host, Jean-Pierre. You know, there's two ways of getting fresh fish. One, you can catch it yourself. Two, you can go to a fish market. Well, since I'm not very lucky today in catching the perfect fish, we're going to go to the fish market. I'm going to show you how to select the perfect and the freshest fish. Let's go right away. We are lucky here. We're in Florida. We have stone crab. Little size, medium size, and then we have the large jumbo stone crab. If you never had stone crab, do yourself a favor. Pick some up, order them, do whatever it takes, but you must try them sometime. They are the sweetest, the most wonderful crab there is. Dave, good morning. Hey, chef, how are you? Wonderful. Good to see you. Great, great, yeah. And you know, I'm here to shop again to pick up some beautiful fish. You know, the only place I like to come is here because I can touch the fish. You're allowing me to touch and to smell, and you know how important it is. So let me walk around and see what you got. You got some beautiful dolphin. Oh, I like that dolphin. Some salmon, some flounders, beautiful grouper. Oh, look at those yellow tails. Those are beautiful. Oh, mamma mia, look at this halibut. How much does that weigh? Oh, this halibut's 75 pounds. 75 pounds. That's a nice piece of fish. Beautiful steaks out of them. Oh, oh, shrimp. Okay. You remember I always tell you about shrimps, 21, 25, U15, and the 10. You don't know what I'm talking about sometimes because I don't explain it very well. Well, today I'm going to take the time to do it. Now, this is what we call a 21, 25 shrimps. That means that it's 21, 25 to a pound. That's it. Every pound you got 21, 25. This one is called a U15. That means that it's 15 to 13 to 15 to a pound. And this one here is called a Ender 7. That means then there is Ender 7 to a pound. Exactly. 6 to 7, very simple, isn't it? Exactly. Very nice. Wait. Anyway, let's know. I don't want to buy any shrimp today. I don't think... Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to show everybody how to buy fresh fish. Now, here it is. We have today a beautiful yellowtail. Now, what do we do when we buy fish? The number one thing you must do, you must be able to pick it up and take a big whiff out of its whiff and smell it. If it smells fishy, Put it back, it's not a good fish. This one I love because it doesn't smell fishy. Like all your fish, it never smells fishy. You have the freshest, the most wonderful fish. Now, Thank you, chef. now one thing is one other thing. We must pick it up. And if it's not fishy, there still is a few more tests we must do. The number two test we must do is we must touch it. And if your finger, don't be afraid to press it, if your finger make an indentation, which means if it leaves an indentation, that means then the flesh is not elastic anymore. And if it is not elastic anymore, that means it's old. That's very, very important. So we must make sure that the flesh is very firm, and as you lift your finger back up, it does not leave a mark. That's number one. Number two, the eye. Don't be afraid to look at the eye and look at it real good now because it must be transparent and it must be whole, full, not sunken and milky. You know if it is, it's not a good fresh fish. Another thing, the gill. Make sure you open up the fish and make sure that the gill are nice and red. 
If they are not, if they dark color, you know something is not very fresh either. So the eye, nice and clear, the gill nice and red, the, f the, f the, the, the flesh nice and firm, and no smell. Did I forget anything, Dave? Well, you might have added a little bit of slime. A slime little bit good. of slime gives you a little of that idea. Yes, very good. Okay, now, what am I going to buy today? Chef, what about these flounder? We oh, they are so ugly. Uh -huh. Oh, God, I hate those things. Look at that. They're two eyes next to each other. White side and black side. Yeah, they're ugly, 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 ugly. No, no, no. Oh, dolphin. You know what? You have the most beautiful dolphin at all time. Now, we must explain. That's what I'm going to get. Whoops. Oh, mama mia, that's a big one. We must explain that this is not flipper the dolphin here. This is mahi. Mahi. Now, I understand that's really called a dolphin, though, but they changed the name because everybody thought we were eating flipper. Exactly. They got dolphin and porpoises mixed up. Matter of fact, you see up here...